During the pandemic, I considered myself something of an amateur baker. That is until the flour ran out. I don't know, did that happen to any of you? I specialized in one thing, banana bread. And I must say, it was kind of funny buying bananas and then making sure no one ate them before they went bad. <laughs> but when the flour ran out and I couldn't get any more because the stores didn't have any, I had to pivot. So I bought what I could find. I bought almond flour, oat flour, and some other imitation flour that I don't remember. Well, from that point forward, everything was terrible. <laughs> Now, as an aside, I know there are some people here who can't tolerate gluten and can cook delicious things without wheat flour, but that's not me. For me, cooking without wheat flour was cooking with the wrong ingredients. We are in week three of our message series, Missing Ingredients, and if you're just joining us, welcome. Let me take a few moments to recap what we've been talking about. Missing ingredients are the little things that have a big impact on the end product. And to one degree or another, we all have some missing ingredients in our lives. Maybe it's quality time with your family, maybe it's a commitment to prayer, or maybe it's the discipline that you need to achieve your goals and live in accord with your values. By themselves, these are little things, but if they're present, they're like the yeast that makes all the dough rise. Last week we talked about how there are too many cooks in the kitchen because there are so many voices in our culture and our lives that are telling us what to do. But we said that God, God is the only one who wants everything for you and takes nothing from you except your sins. If you are new to church or if you're just coming back after a while or if you're, you're searching for the place of faith in your life, I want to extend to you a special invitation, an invitation to something we're starting called Jumpstart. Jumpstart is a midweek series for folks who feel like their spiritual batteries need charging or if they're wondering that faith might be an ingredient that they need more of in their life. We'll share more information about Jumpstart next week. And since each of us are on a spiritual journey, we're starting a new initiative called Along the Path. Along the Path will include speakers and workshops that will help you along the path to a better life through Jesus Christ. Our first presentation is going to be three keys to nourishing your family life with Dr. Tim Muldoon, who's an author and a professor at Boston College. It'll be on October 6th. I won't say more, but the three keys are important ingredients that sometimes might be missing. Okay, and that's all of our commercials for today. <laughs> Today we're talking about the wrong ingredients. And wrong ingredients are a bigger deal than using almond flour when regular flour is called for, or even putting salt in your coffee instead of sugar. Wrong ingredients are what's not called for in a recipe. And I'm just gonna go ahead and state the obvious. Sin, deliberate sin, big or small, is always a wrong ingredient in the recipe of our lives. But to continue with the food analogy, wrong ingredients are the things that might make you feel full but actually leave you empty because they lack nutritional value. Things like pride, laziness, love of comfort, gossip, and the list could go on. We can kind of think of the, uh, the junk foods, the junk foods which might give you a burst of energy but then you crash. And I can almost hear my mother saying in my ear, don't fill up on Oreos, cookies, or potato chips, French, because then you're not gonna wanna eat your dinner. In our gospel today, Jesus tells the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And simply put, the rich man lived his life filled with junk. So he did not want the things that really mattered. Filled with the wrong ingredients, 
He did not have room for the right ingredients. We read in the gospel, the rich man dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. In themselves, wealth and all material goods are really morally indifferent. It's how you use them that makes the difference. For the rich man, his wealth could have been the right ingredients that lifted him to heaven. But instead, because of how they used him, they were the wrong ingredients that plunged him to hell. The rich man could have used his his wealth to honor God and to help his neighbor, but instead he selfishly pampered himself. So, So filled with the wrong ingredients, he missed out on the ingredients that really mattered. And on the other hand, we have Lazarus. We read, Lazarus was covered with sores and would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. And for Lazarus, it's the same thing. His miserable state could have been the wrong ingredients that pushed him to despair. But instead, it was an ingredient that led him to be humble. And as St. Augustine says, Lazarus was received to heaven because of his humility and not because of his poverty. St. Augustine continues, and wealth itself was not what kept the rich man from eternal bliss. His punishment was for selfishness. The rich man's example, I think, invites us to examine our hearts to see where selfishness or any other wrong ingredient has a grip. Wrong ingredients are things like the various forms of self-medicating, nursing grudges, pornography habits, or having to be a rock and refusing to open yourself to others. You might think that it's okay to tolerate a wrong ingredient in your life. Maybe you think to yourself, well, I'm strong. A wrong ingredient won't hurt me. Or maybe you think, even though wrong ingredients are bad for others, they're not so bad for me. But friends, those are lies of the devil. Because the truth of the matter is this. You don't hold on to wrong ingredients It's wrong ingredients that hold on to you. You don't hold on to wrong ingredients. It's the wrong ingredients that hold on to you. We feel their grip in different ways, and I know for me, one way that I feel the grip of wrong ingredients is at the end of the day, but before it's time for bed. I think to myself, I could read, I could call my mother, I could pray, But more often than I'd like to admit, I just fall into that lethargy and get lost in my phone. And since that's the wrong ingredient, I'm neither happier nor better for it. But whatever wrong ingredients happen to have a hold on you, don't lose hope because Jesus always extends his hand to you and wants to show you a better way. You can start by choosing an ingredient, a good ingredient that you want more of and a wrong ingredient that you want less of. Good ingredients are virtues, that is good habits, and these are the things that lift you up. Wrong ingredients are the vices, that is the bad habits, and these are the things that pull you down. So they're opposites. And the best way to overcome a bad habit is to form a good habit in its place. So maybe one of the virtues or the good ingredients that you wanna grow in is one of the ones that St. Paul encouraged Timothy to pursue in the second reading. Faith, love, patience, or gentleness. Or maybe it's something else like understanding, sympathy, friendship, or generosity. 
No matter where you start, doesn't matter the ingredient, no matter where you start, you and the people around you will be better for it. So, which wrong ingredient do you want to get rid of first? First. 